the Bible tells us that when man in his rebellious state said, we will now come to, we will build a tower that will reach the heavens. His desire was to get to the knowledge. His desire was to get to the height, the breadth, the width of God. The level that is on the table, man has always seek to find God. Mighty God. The Bible said of this God, that there's the multiplicity of him. The Bible said in John, uh, amen, that he's the beginning and the ending. That is the first and the last. That means that he's the only wise God. There's no other God beside him. This God said, I look to the east and I look to the west. And there is none other God beside me. I am the one who spun the heavens with my own finger. I am the one who had the plan. I am the one who put the plan into his discourse. I am the one who said, I'm going to make man. And I'm going to make him in my own image after my own likeness. Something that God did that is profound. He made me in his own image. In other words, he made me to represent him. He made me to be like him. And so because he's a God who's creative, I am creative. Because he's a God who knows all things, I desire to know all things. There's something about the power of God that's attractive. That's right, man. There's something about the power of God that when you have it, you are, you become distinct. Yes. When you possess this power, people crave to know it. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, a few days ago, uh, my older sister Nicole called me up and she said, Pastor, I need a certain book, a certain study that you have. And I raced her off the phone. <laughs> I, I said, no, you can't have that. She said, can I have it, Pastor? I, I want to look at it. I said, no, you can't have it. You can't just walk in and take this glory that God gave me. I called and apologized. I said, you can't just get this glory. You got to first walk with me. Help me now. You got to first suffer with me. You got to first go through the struggle that I go through. You got to go through the hardship. And when I'm cast away, you got to be cast away beside me. And when I'm lifted up, you got to be lifted up beside me. And when I'm down, you got to hold my hand. And when I'm happy, you got to praise God with me. And after a while, then I'll release. All right. All right. All right. Amen. You can't get this so easy. And the, Bible, the Bible said in the book of Genesis that there you were know, two brothers named Cain and Abel. Mm. The Bible said that they wanted something from God. Right, right. They knew that God had something that they wanted. The Bible said that they went to God and Sister Nicole and they brought their sacrifice. Right. They went to God. And one brother said that, hey, Lord of mercy. Abel said, I want it so badly that I will do everything that I have to do to get it. Sometimes we want God to bless us without us putting in the work. We want to raise and pay when we don't deserve it. We want our boss to give us commendation when we sit at home and are late for work every day. Lord, help me now. Uh, I don't feel good, but I'm still pushing. We want God to elevate us. We want God to bless us. We want God to lay his hand upon us. You are my son without any trials. The first time you go to trials, you start complaining. You murmur. You complain. You whine. Where is God when I need him? No. But Abel said, I'll do everything that I have to do to get a hold of this God. The first thing that comes out of the matrix, I'm going to offer it to God. I'm going to put it on a platter. I'm going to present it to God. For God has something that I want. You're going to understand today that if you want something from God, you have to put out your best foot. That's right. You can't go to God expecting a blessing without hard work. You can't go to God expecting to be anointed without prayer, good prayer. That's right. That's right. You gotta put your plate down. That's right. A good fasting life. That's right. A good self denial. When you present that to God, it comes up before Him as a sweet smelling thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, help me this morning. A uh, man has something in him that desires greatness. A few weeks ago, we read it in the news about a Quebec doctor and six of his colleagues who wanted to climb a very high mountain yeah, in the Himalaya. In, 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 in Naples. They went up to Naples, it's a journey, and they wanted to pinnacle. They wanted to get to the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. and they climbed and they climbed and a great avalanche they came down and destroyed. But it's not the avalanche, but this doctor already declared that he'd rather die 
But he has to get that passion, that thing that he desires. He said, I wanted to pinnacle that mountain. I would fight. I would climb. I would do anything to get to the top. Man has in himself a desire to reach beyond the unknown, to get to somewhere, a place where he has never gone before. That's why they created the movie Star Trek. And Star Trek theme was going to places that no man has ever gone before. There was another news the other day about a swimmer. She tried seven times to swim from That's Florida right. to Cuba. That's she right. tried and she tried. And she she bitten by everything in That's the water. Right. Fast bitten, but her determination get is there. to get to Cuba. She hasn't made it yet. But no, she said no. she'll try again. Ah, we saw Neil Armstrong in the 60s who decided that he is going to get to the moon. Right. And the whole NASA program said there's something out there that I want. There's something out there that I need. And I'll do anything to get there. But history tells us that they did it. And they got to the moon. Yeah. And Neil Armstrong walked out. And he hopped on the moon. And stuck his flag. And conquer. We got there. We got to the moon. Something in man that desire the unknown. He wants to know beyond the beyond the beyond the beyond. He wants to understand it. He wants to get to it. Amen. Now the Bible tells us a great story about a man named Elijah. And if you know the story of Elijah, Elijah was a call of God. Elijah was an anointed man of God. Ah, uh, God, the Bible right. tells us that Elijah stood for the principles of God. Right. Elijah went up to the mountain and fought against Jezebel and her prophets. The Bible said he did that which God desired him to do. Uh, he killed all of Jezebel's prophets. The Bible said that he reformed Israel. He spoke words and God would honor his words. He said, hey, because of your filthiness, it will never rain. And God honored it. Amen to God. Elijah was a man of power. A man of thunder, a man who walked in the precepts and the ordinances right. of God. When you saw Elijah, you saw glory. When you saw Elijah, you saw the power of God. When Elijah stepped in the room, the atmosphere would change. Devils would go running. Hallelujah. I heard Ahab said, Have thou found me oh my enemy? Ahab was afraid, for Elijah would discern him and see who he was. This man, Elijah, was this man Elijah had a relationship somebody say relationship he had a relationship with God I'm here to tell you that without a relationship with God you are going nowhere without a relationship with God you can't fly without a relationship with God you are not known of God the Bible said this man had a relationship run with me, run with me, I'm going somewhere the Bible said he had a relationship with God but it came a time when Elijah Elijah's ministry was finished. It came to the end of Elijah's ministry. And Elijah said, God, I am finished. So the Bible said that God told Elijah to go down to a certain place and see a young man. A young man who God knew. A young man who had a desire. A young man who had a burning desire for God. I told the congregation this morning that God knows you from before the foundation of the world. And God handpicks you and predetermined you because of your character for his glory. The Bible said that uh, he said, go down to a certain place and when you see this young man, just cast your mantle over him. The Bible said that Elijah listened to God's word and he walked down to a certain place and he saw Elijah plowing the field. Hallelujah to God. Plowing his parents' field. Living a life that wasn't fulfilled. So I must pray for money, but I want to tell you something. Money don't give you happiness. I want to tell you that riches and wealth and status don't give you the joy that you need in God. Elisha was plowing, but inside of Elisha, he said, this can't be it. This can't be the end of my life. I've got purpose. God has purposed me for something. He must have prayed to God and said, God, I can't do this for the rest of my life. The Bible said as he plowed, as Elijah went by and put his mantle over him. And as he put his mantle over him, the Bible said that he dropped the plow. They grabbed one of the oxen and chopped it up, made a sacrifice, ran to his parents and said, Mama, and then I gotta go. For there's something in me that desires something greater. There's something down in me that's burning for something greater. Something higher. Deeper yet I pray. And higher every day. Elisha now 
said, God, there has to be something. And when the day came, Elijah left all. Some of us can't leave some much more all. Ah, God. Some of us can't leave a relationship that God did not sanction. Some of us can't leave a certain job that God said, oh, hard on. Some of us can't leave the simple thing, yet we want God to bless us and entrust us with the big thing. Somebody pray for me. Help me now. Some of us, God, want God to bless us profoundly in inner parts and the outer parts. But we don't want to do what requires. The Bible said he left all. Lord of mercy. To walk with God, you need to leave all. Have somebody to leave all. No, oh, you're not saying it. Okay, I don't need it anyway. No. Elijah left everything that he knew. He left it all. He said, I gotta follow this man. I gotta follow him. But when he passed me by, something touched me. And oh, the joy. That's my soul. When the joy of the Lord touched me, you start dancing. But the joy of the Lord has become my soul. Right. Elijah said there's something about this man. I don't know him. I don't know much about him. But I'm going to follow him. And wherever he leads, and I will go without a murder. The Bible said that Elijah followed him. He followed him and the same Elijah. Elijah is the same word. It's Elijah. They're both called Elijah. Elijah for preaching sake. Said I'm going to follow Elijah. Amen to God. Wherever he goes and whatever he does, I'll be a student. Hallelujah. But I know I can always be a student forever. But I got to start somewhere. To be a great leader, I got to be a greater follower. That's right. That's right. Some of us want to lead, but I've never followed. Help me now. Some of us want God to put us in leadership position, but we have never been obedient. Lord, help me now. Can I get radical? Yes, yes. Some of us, God, want God to put that kernel thing on our chest and our shoulder when we haven't even been on the battlefield. We have never fought a devil once in our life. We have never been cast down. We've been pampered. And we want God to bless us. God don't work in that way. So when you're going through your trials, don't get down. The right to lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah. Come on, tell somebody hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. I don't know what trials I'm going to run up. I know the Lord will make a way. I don't know how, but somehow. I don't know where, but somewhere. Some door will come open. Some window is going to fly open. The glory of God is going to fall somehow. Thank you. Oh, I'm feeling it now. Trials you got to go. Sadness, you gotta go. Our emotions are taking you out. Fret not thyself. Fret not thyself. Come on, my condos. I will lift up the blood stain down. For God I live. And for God I die. Elijah, wherever you go, I'm gonna follow you. But I got a burning feeling down inside of me. God. But I need to follow somebody That's since the journey. Somebody that will teach me. Somebody that will hold me. When I fail, somebody that will lift me up. Somebody will hold me. Don't worry about it. Everything is going to be alright. I don't need my money to tell me. Hallelujah. And so Elisha now decided I'm going to follow this man. But this man has something. Ah, but he touched me. Ah, there's a power of God that's on the inside. But when it touched what's on my inside, it will activate the power. It will release the anointing. And I will grow into what God wants me to be. But I want to tell you something about following. Ah, you got to be calculated. I was telling my supervisor, uh, my directors the other day, I said, look, don't think I sit in this office and don't watch you. I said, I uh, studied you, I've analyzed you to the core. She wants to know what it is. I said, I can't tell you that. But I'm watching.